Good morning everyone and welcome to the show. Today, you guys are gonna be super excited about this one because it's another one of your favorite. It's a 911. And what is it a 911 in? Well, I can tell you this much, it's not an F-150. It's a brand new Dodge Ram. What's going on, Fernando? Hey, just dressing the car. Getting it prepped. So I know what you're thinking. How could a brand new vehicle already be in for a 911? And that was kind of my thought. It's here, so let's see what's going on with it. So from the onset, just looking at the vehicle, everything is where it's supposed to be. Nothing is missing, loose, or broken as of yet that we can find. It has the factory Harman Kardon system in it with the eight inch touchscreen. There's a box up underneath the seat and it is covering these. We are getting rid of this box and we're gonna go with a Fox box. This box is coming out because it sounds like poo poo. The subs are sitting right on the carpet. I can barely get my hand up underneath here. And they are some sundowns, which are some really nice subs. They do the surround inverted so that it takes up less room. So they do a really nice job of trying to make these as thin as possible. They're just not working in this style enclosure with it as close to the floor. If the floor mat wasn't in there, it would probably be okay. One thing to note about the box is the box came trunk liner gray. He didn't like that, so they actually vinyl dyed it. That is to say spray painted it black. Feels really like, uh like you would paint carpet would feel. Do have one of these Dodge Rams located on the seat is a pull tab so you can kind of like reach in behind and pull down. They put a zip tie on it to make it easier to unpull. What we have behind the seat is three DD audio amplifiers crammed in here and the problem that immediately happens that he was complaining about is the way they mounted this amplifier. This seat slides because they mounted the amplifier right here. The seat no longer slides properly and he's like please fix that. The other thing too is we saw pick pictures of this, they actually took the whole seat out and they cleaned off a bunch of area behind here, but then they put this thick board on here and didn't allow any of the amplifiers to get countersunk into there. So that's that's gonna be interesting to figure out what we're gonna do there. One of the other things we're doing is we're gonna be adding a DSP. So before we get these out, what we wanna do is go up underneath the hood, disconnect the power. So he was complaining also that he spent a lot of money on the front speakers and rear speakers, audio frog, of course. He didn't get that quality sound sound and he think that was the speakers. He actually and, thought that the Harman Kardon system sounded better. Right and I'm like no because he's missing the DSP. His confusion about DSPs like most is he thought DSP was just to do like time alignment and stuff like that and I was like dude if you don't want time alignment you don't have to have time alignment. DSP does more in this case you really want the DSP for the crossovers and the EQ and the volume adjust and, and all the other stuff. We're gonna do time delay but we're gonna do it subtly and we can always go in and turn it off if he doesn't like the way it sounds. But getting back to the battery. So it seems okay, but Post. not really. I feel that this is too long. Yeah, they the can heck? actually mount the, the fuse right here and you don't have to go. You don't have to have this extra wire pretzel? Like a 12 inches. Yeah, why do we have that? Yeah. The other question I have is that's a four gauge. Is that the only fuse holder? That's the only fuse holder. So right now we're running four gauge for three amplifiers. Which isn't crazy, depending on what the power draw is of the three amplifiers. So once we get those three amplifiers out, we'll do some math and figure out what the amperage straws and the amplifiers, the length of the wire that we used, and we'll find out if four gauge is adequate or if we need to go to maybe two four gauges or all the way up to a zero gauge. I mean, I'm thinking we're going to need at least a zero gauge, possibly two four gauges, depending on where the amplifiers end up. All right. Either way, I don't think one is enough. Anytime you start one of these projects though, first step is to always remove the fuse holder and tighten the battery back up. Key, tighten the battery back up because you may be turning on and off the car a couple times and you don't want this terminal to be loose. With the power disconnected, we have two tasks that we're both gonna tackle. Fernando's gonna get this driver's door off, get the dash cover off, and one of the passenger doors, so we need to get the doors off the car. Supposedly they've already sound treated the cars, but there's no fast rings. The other thing too is they mounted the mid-range in the door. He wants the mid-range in the dash. He wants the tweeter that's in the dash mounted into the door. That means we're gonna be making some new bracket if they even made brackets. We have to get this apart and figure out what's going on. Anytime we do one of these, we're gonna pull every piece of the vehicle apart. All the floor rails, the dash, everything. The one nice thing is that it already has an amp pro. That means there shouldn't be too much cutting done anywhere. We are going to add in the Tosh link to 
the amp pro so that we can go into the DSP we're using. For that, we're gonna be using the audio control DMA10. So we're gonna to Tosh link out of the radio into the processor and then RCAs out to the amplifiers. Which brings us to the next thing. I'm gonna start getting the back apart where the amplifiers are and start removing all that. But before we do that, we wanna pull this back seat out because we're gonna be back there a long time and I don't really wanna mess up anything on the seat. So this is one of those things that just kinda I look at and I question like how did this happen? Was it an afterthought? So here's the sub wire. It's on the outside of this. There's the red power wire. It went behind it. How did this get like this? It just kinda doesn't make sense. When you pull this up, which this corner isn't attached down, but as you pull it up, this is stuck on the inside. There's these little teeth right here. The base knob got stuck into this. This leads me to believe that I, I feel like the base knob was forgotten and they just threw it in real quick, which kind of makes sense because this is the base knob and it's just Velcroed in place. I want to get this pull back off, but first let's take a look at this. Here we go. So we have two distribution blocks with the four gauge feeding it and then two eight gauge and a four gauge coming out. Maybe these are small enough to handle it. We have some fuses here. This one is a 50 amp draw. This one has 325 amp fuses, so that's 75, so we're at 125 amps of current draw. Oh, and then this one doesn't have any fuses at all, so it's not drawing any current. That would explain the single four gauge. You only had these two amps to worry about, right? Am I right? Am I right? Over here we have the ground distribution. So essentially we have two distribution blocks, which would be fine if this had fuses on it. This one doesn't have fuses on it, which means that that could screw these two amplifiers and cause issues. If the three amplifiers stay in place, we will be switching this out for fuse distribution, not just distribution. What I really need to do is just start unscrewing this and getting it off. If you ever wonder why we recommend running ferrules, this is a prime example of why. This was screwed into here and that screw down, this style here, it ate up all but those little pieces of wire right there. That's it. No matter how awesome this wire was that you ran, it totally shredded it when it got screwed down. Or in the case of this wire, pushed it in so far, he just screwed down into the sheeting itself. We're gonna be disconnecting this, whatever this goes to, we're gonna cut it. We're not worried about polarity, plus we're gonna be pulling all the speakers I don't need to worry about whether the speakers are correct or not at this moment. But what I would like to see is what this amplifier was powering. According to the dip switches here, it is on high pass. This will go up to 5K. It's kind of nice. It's in two channel input mode, which is this guy here. Okay, so this is what's weird. This amp could, on this particular channel, could actually do a band pass, it looks like, but the band pass is off. Find out what this is powering. So this would have been three and four. What is that? Two and a half. The rear channel on this is the two and a half, which totally needed a band pass. And for those of you that are going, what is he talking about band pass? Band pass means that there's a low pass filter and a high pass filter. So you want the mid range to play between those frequencies of the mid bass and the tweeter. You need to limit its performance between those two. And having a high and low pass crossover will give you that. I'm assuming that these next two should be the tweeters. Yeah. This one also, channel one also has the ability to do a band pass. It is on high pass, so that's good. The wire that they used is oxygen free copper, it's Stinger. Four gauge piece here is actually T-Spec from Metra. It is marine grade wire according to the sleeving. We have two different style RCAs going on here. I'm thinking one is just a short run, so we have one oddball here. The ground eight gauge is Stinger. When you pull wires out of the amplifier and you unscrew these screws, do yourself a favor, screw them back in nice and tight before you start moving them around. Nothing sucks worse than get to the end of the installation and go to screw your wires in and the screw down has fallen out and is missing because you didn't do this one step. This is weird. We have, on here they used all zip ties with screw holes. These two are the reusable kind, these little things. All right, this piece of ground wire is Stinger. The only four speakers we have left are the mid bass and the bottom of the door, which this is, and then the rear doors. 
looking at the amplifier here they just had it running high pass they didn't have a band pass on it either there again this needs a band pass because you want it how low it's going to play down meaning to not interfere with the subwoofer and or blow the speaker and how high it's going to play up so it doesn't interfere with the mid-range these amplifiers can do it they just didn't use it, it doesn't make any sense unless they just didn't know what they were doing it looks like they get this panel off it's just this one screw right here cut the carpet but the board sat on top of the carpet which doesn't make any sense because they could have gone in deeper with it they left this there's another one right here I still don't understand why they cut this if they didn't use that space and they didn't rub this stuff in very well huge gap like if you don't rub this stuff in it just peels right off and I could peel it all off we got a whole mess of RCAs right here. That are... okay, this is weird. It's like stuck behind this panel. Let me get this bolt out. So the remote turn on was wrapped around this bottom clip along with the RCAs because they're not properly fastened into the car. Here's what I don't understand about when people bundle up wires like this. This remote turn on bundled up inside of here. Why? It's a single wire that is cut on the other end. There's no reason to have it looped in with this RCA. It doesn't serve any purpose. And here's the fun part. Here's a butt connector on the wire because it wasn't long enough. Are you kidding me? It was... We got another... Dude, I got another five feet of wire right here. How freaking lazy are you? So you ran the ground wire up where the factory harness, look at this. So they ran the ground wire here up into the factory wiring harness area, but they tucked the RCA into this, and then it comes into here, it wrapped all up through here, it was bundled up behind here. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, here's the ground. Why is it here? You could have gone here, drilled the hole, put a bolt on it, but you went into this. I'm sure you thought that going into this because it's two pieces of metal that that's better, but you were attached to a piece of metal that's tacked into this piece of metal. You don't know how clean that metal is between, oh my God. Grounds are very important, people. This is not a good one. And they taped up the wire for what you can see. Not the whole wire, just, just the part that you can see. So that this doesn't corrode and rust, I'm gonna put some treatment on the bottom now before we forget to do it later. Clean the area on the top, rub it in nice and tight. Clean off the bottom. I don't know how long these RCAs are, but I'm not gonna reuse them because they're way too long for what we're trying to do. Here's the deal. This isn't the worst install we've seen come in here. As you guys know, we've seen a lot worse. This is an example of just sloppy work. I don't know if they were rushed, which I know they weren't because they had the car for like a week. They may have had other work to do. I don't know. Everything about this is just just sloppy and sloppy sloppy ends up like this when you're doing an install you want to set yourself up for as much success as possible when you do a crappy job running wires well when you have noise and things don't work right eh, you know it's probably that taking an extra hour in the whole time of this installation would have made this a much better install but they didn't do that as i'm talking to you i'm looking over here let me show you what i'm looking at so here's the power wire there again they taped up what you could see and not what is actually needing the tape. The whole purpose of the tape, this, this is not for visual. You can see that, that's perfectly safe. You tape up the wire so when it goes behind the panel, just like the factory is here, it doesn't get rubbed on, it doesn't get cut, and it doesn't get damaged. This is what this is for. This is not for beauty. Who wants to see some crappy taped wires? You do it for the protection of the wire not for pretty you need to keep the wires safe for all you guys that are just taping like the last six inches of wire stop doing it stop wasting the tape save the tape trees okay tape either the whole wire or don't waste your time doing it because you're doing absolutely nothing no one is looking at you saying dude he's so cool he put some tape on the wire nobody the factory tapes up their wire you tape up your wire that's it it's all it's there for as i'm taking everything out i create different piles wire goes into one pile screws and trash go into another 
distribution blocks or parts that I'm gonna keep go into one pile. Now that this is all out, I'm gonna clean all this up, trash, he gets back, we may reuse, and then put the panels away so they're safe until we're done. Put the amplifiers over on the bench so we can figure out how this is all gonna go. Start pulling the rest of these wires and whatnot. Let's enjoy Fernando getting these door panels off, seeing what is going on with them. Now it's time to take the door panel out and the handle we have, looks like it's one screw here. So we're gonna grab our panel, 10 millimeter. And behind it, all the handle, it's another plastic cover. It's a two 10 millimeter also. And then I don't see nothing else. We're gonna go and look, grab our favorite plastic panel and start from the bottom. Now you can see it's almost coming out. So that means there's no screws in the bottom. And there we go. Door panels off. Door panels off. What are we looking at? Of course they do the roll kill. Yeah. Seems like it's not. Just like the back, it's not really rubbed in all that well. Correct. If you're gonna service this door, it's gonna be super hard. They're gonna cut all of it. Whoever on got... top of the wiring. Not that's, a good idea. That's gonna suck. We have the mid-range here. It's got little, little washers to space it out a little bit. While well, he's getting that out, let's take a look at the door panel here. This is the opening for that. It's rather small compared to the size of the speaker. And with how spaced out that was, I wonder if it was actually hitting. We're gonna relocate the tweeter to here. There's a lot more room, it'll fit better. And because we're going full active, we're gonna have volume control for each speaker. So if this is a little bright, we can tone it down. Is that bright enough? We can turn it up. Got the door speaker out. They use the connector right here. Good for them. These are the Audio Frog GS 690s. Rubber washers. No washer. Oh, it must be it's so not, it doesn't rattle. It's not doing nothing. I know it's not doing anything. It looks like they used a connector, but then cut it off with butt connectors behind right, it. Right here. Okay. This is the Audio Frog GS25. How does it look inside the door? We got nothing. Just is that the only piece? piece? How that's far does it. it go in? That's it. Oh, that's, yeah, because I mean, that's I can see the have. white below your arm yeah. there. If I was to guess, whatever they did here, or whatever scrap they had left over, they just stuck it in the door. I'm not saying yes. I'm guessing all the purpose of doing roll kill is to actually do it in the bottom. Well, it's solid right there. Sound treatment looks about the same. We've seen in everything so far. It's just kind of laying on the door. But here's my thought. Maybe we don't rub it in because if it ever needs to be serviced, if we leave it like this, it'll be way easier to service. I think we might be doing a disservice by rubbing it in. If we rub it in and someone needs to change this part right here, that's really gonna suck. We have the GS693s in the rear. Nice three-way Audio Frog 6x9. <laughs> Got some on the plug. Yeah, man. Why not? They're rattling. And just like all the other doors, we have one little piece here. That's it. Now off camera and remove these two doors and they look identical. Little pieces here, little pieces there. Nothing to get excited about as far as that's concerned. So the last piece we need to pull out is the tweeter and the dash. There. <laughs> Use the wiring just like in the door over here. It didn't have the right end on it, so they just cut it off and T-tapped it in to the factory wiring. But hey, they didn't cut the plug. It's a T. Yeah, it's a T, it's the total T. And they did have to make brackets. I don't know how they make the bracket. Oh. They cut it with tin snips. Well, he's pretty good. It looks like they trace it on with a marker and then they cut it with tin snips. And they use 16th inch ABS. All right. And they made the hole just a little bit too small. So you can see how it bows. Then they put some epoxy to hold the tweeter in place. Spectacular. All the speakers are out. The wiring is disconnected. For those of you that aren't aware, the amplifier in this is underneath the passenger seat. On this being a 2020 right now, they do not make a T harness for this to retain the factory harness. It is cut and it is cut way too close to the plug for my liking. You got more pretty tape. Although at least they taped it up so you didn't see it underneath the seat which is cool. The sad part right here is these big red buck connectors right here, they cut the harness. You don't do it this close to the harness. This sucks. We have one thing still to remove and that is the radio to get to the amp pro we are going to be pulling that out for one we need to disconnect those rcas and two we're going to be installing the tosh link module into it let's head to the dash first step to get the radio off is to remove this little rubber pocket sleeve from up here there's two seven millimeters that need to come out 
And this just unclips. At the top, you want to unplug the cigarette lighter. Power port, I guess is what it's called now. Behind the radio, there's four more plugs that need to be removed. These two here on the radio itself, one on the air conditioning panel, and one down here on the little switch panel. This is the radio. There's four screws holding that in place. Clean this out. Here's the T-harness for the Amp Pro, plugged into the back of the radio, plugged in here. It has this new speaker loop here, depending on whether you have the Harman Kardon system or not. This one has it, so it needs to be plugged in. But it looks like the brain box is fallen in the dash. Let's see if you can get it from underneath there. Oh, I'll find it. Oh. Yeah, can you all plug oh. it from there? Yeah. Okay. It's just hanging loose up underneath the knee buster on the driver's side. I actually like it there as opposed to behind the radio. That way, if you ever have to service it, it's simple and easy to unplug. You don't have to pull this whole radio out. The problem is, is that it's just hanging there like this, just gonna rattle around. What we have to do is make a mount that it can get firmly mounted to. And then if we need to service it, all we have to do is remove just the knee buster and it'll be right there, easy to get at. Now that we know that, I can get this all put back together.